What was the solution then for M247? We use these modular boxes to fit around buildings as part of a balanced ventilation system. Air is pushed in, it sometimes goes over the pads which are dry or sometimes wet, cooling gorgeous fresh air into the building and recirculating around. Now many people have existing data centres with legacy equipment and require retrofit. So we have to have a number of uh, installation methods to implement this. And this is what we actually ended up with. These are two stacked coolers sitting at the bottom there with side discharge coolers pushing air in through, removed, um, remove a window and allow the duct to go in there, which then goes into the raised floor. The top duct is air which is returning the hot air from the hot side of the data centre. One of the key issues with a ventilation system or a true free air system in Northern Europe is the air is actually too cold most of the time. So we have to heat it up. And we do that by creating an, a, a temperation loop which brings that hot air back into the cooler to warm the incoming air up. So we came out with a solution there, 500 kilowatts. Required 14 of those um, eco-cooling cracks stacked in that way. Now that gave us N plus 1 redundancy on the crack system. But we didn't move completely away from refrigeration. We put in an equivalent capacity of refrigeration. Bought simple cracks to the full volume. And we did that for really one prime reason. If you've got a ventilation system, you have to have a plan if there is a fire, either internally or externally. Most data centres will have a fire suppression system in place. You have to be able to seal the room to, to contain that fire suppressant. You can't do that while you've got a ventilation system running providing the cooling. That is when you have a system which then switches the refrigeration based cooling back on in an internal fire condition. Secondly, you've got another issue if there's an external fire. You don't want to be bringing these carbon deposits from an external fire into the building and into your IT suite. Therefore, that's another key requirement of why you need an additional system to provide the cooling when you've got to shut the ventilation system down for an external fire. What that happens then is we actually end up with a two-end solution. We have a complete refrigeration system and a complete evaporative cooling solution. A lot of you will now be thinking, well, this is going to be an expensive solution. Not necessarily, because the evaporative cooling system is a relatively low cost capital investment. And if you look at the savings which are achieved, most cooling systems are paying for themselves, have a return on investment of less than one year. So to balance the two is a very sound economic move, both capital and operationally, and you can end up with a very high degree of resilience and redundancy. This is a cross-section, a simplistic view of how it all works. We have an evaporative cooler, which is providing air through an axial fan, down discharge, and into a raised floor. We then go through the tile, the, um, uh, the grill that you see on, the, on every um, uh, conventional uh, raised access floor, going into the coal side of the racks, where the air is pulled in by the fans. It then comes out through the hot side, and then is exhausted out of the building. There we have a damper which allows that hot air to come back into the centre of the cooler and mix with the ambient air which is going over those filter pads. For 90% of the time we will be running on a fresh air system just using the hot air to warm the, the ambient air up to give us compliant conditions going forward typically about 20 degrees centigrade. Just as a slight aside, when we, when we commissioned M247, we started with a set point of 20 degrees centigrade. 
As time progressed, we've actually reduced that, and it's now running at 17 degrees centigrade. The net result of that is, whilst we're achieving the cooling savings, we actually reduce the net IT load as well by running the servers at a lower temperature. So the PUE looked good, but also the net use of the IT went down as well. Now this system, which is a patented system by EcoCooling, provides us with this constant flow situation which is sized to match the requirement of all those little servers and giving us a constant temperature. We put no humidity control whatsoever into the system. The telecoms industry haven't used humidification for years now, so we're not really changing anything there. The thing that might be relevant to um, uh, some people is funding. Um, the M247 project was funded by a loan from the Carbon Trust because they're an SME. Um, the rules have changed slightly and uh, last year um, the uh, M247 organisation got a £350,000 interest free loan to do the whole development. Uh, another company in Bedford received a half million pound loan. But unfortunately the Carbon Trust have, have, have um, rewritten the rules now, so the maximum is £100,000 of an interest-free loan that an SME can get. There's also another organisation called Salix, which is an equivalent scheme but for the public sector, and these systems also qualify within the Salix funding scheme.